Okay, well, welcome back, Rivies. Uh, I hope you're all doing well uh, during this uh, challenging time in all of our lives. Um, this video is going to be devoted to the Cornell of Affair. And the Cornell of Affair um, is very significant uh, for the Bolsheviks' eventual success in October uh, 1917. And it follows on from the July days. So just to recap with the July days. With the July days, uh, it was a failed insurrection against the provisional government. Uh, the Bolsheviks were blamed for it. Still debate about whether they um, led it or not. I believe they really didn't, but. Um, so they were blamed and they lost support as a consequence. However, only uh, just under a couple of months later, so we're talking um, July days, 3rd to the 6th of July 1917. Then the Cornelow affair happened in late August uh, to early September 1917. With the Cornelow affair, the, uh, the Bolsheviks regained support and it's very significant because um, with that support, it enables them to eventually take control of the Petrograd Soviet and do a number of other things which help them then to take, um, to overthrow the provisional government. Um, in uh, October 1917. So before we get to that though, let's just have a little bit of a, a little bit of background about who Kornilov was. So have a look at the man there. There's a picture of him. So he was appointed commander in chief on the 18th of July 1917 by Kerensky. And, uh, He's an, he's an interesting man. He uh, was, uh, he never believed or never supported really the uh, February 1917 revolution. So he's part of the old guard, conservative, uh, would have liked to have seen a restoration of the Tsar um, in power, back into power. Um, and uh, the Kornilov affair is, he is uh, Kornilov marching back from the front, trying to overthrow provisional government and the Petrograd Soviet in uh, Petrograd um, and it goes from there. So anyway, what we'll do is I'll just read something from Lynch because Lynch describes it very well. Uh, Kornilov was a type of army officer who had never accepted the February Revolution. He believed that before Russia could fulfill its national duty of defeating Germany, it must first destroy the socialist enemies within. It's time, he said, to hang the German supporters and spies with Lenin at their head and the Bolsheviks <laughs> and to disperse the Soviet, so the Petrograd Soviet. By late August, the advance of German forces deeper into Russia began to threaten Petrograd itself. Large numbers of refugees and deserters flocked into the city, heightening their tension, the tension there and increasing the disorder. Kornilov declared that Russia and the government stood in grave danger of a socialist inspired insurrection. And he informed Kerensky that he intended to bring his loyal troops to Petrograd to save the provisional government from being overthrown, being overthrown by the Petrograd Soviet and by, uh, and by Lenin and the Bolsheviks. So there are a number of significant points uh, in relation to this, and let's go through them now. So first up, um, when Kerensky heard that Kornilov was marching back to Petrograd, uh, he panicked. And uh, he, he feared that there weren't enough provisional government troops uh, to defend the city against Kornilov. So what he had to do was he had to, he decided to, free all the Bolsheviks who were in prison, Trotsky and others, um, and then arm the Bolsheviks and their supporters. So we see here, this first point here, Kerensky and the provisional government gave firearms to Petrograd citizens, including the Bolsheviks, to help defend the city against Konlov's advance. Fee states over 40,000 were armed. So this is 40,000 workers, um, Bolshevik supporters, all Petrograd Soviet supporters. Um, were armed with uh, provisional government armaments, rifles and so forth. And then the key thing here is the Bolsheviks retained possession of these far firearms 
after the Kornilov affair, which they then used to help them seize power from the provisional government in late October. So uh, by arming, by Kerensky arming uh, Bolshevik supporters, workers, militias and so forth in Petrograd, he uh, pretty much created the army that was going to overthrow him or the troops that were going to overthrow him uh, a month and a bit later. Another significant point, the Red Guards and the Kronstadt uh, sailors, pro-Soviet soldiers who played a crucial role in the October Revolution, were greatly strengthened by the Kornilov affair as well. Okay, So the Red Guards and the Kronstadt sailors, the Red Guards, were, most of them were um, older workers who weren't fighting at the front because they were too old to uh, be soldiers or whatever, so they were still, you know, they were just armed, hung out in Petrograd. Um, and the Kronstadt sailors were the elite sailors, uh, very radical. Uh, they'd pretty much set up their own government on um, the, at the Kronstadt naval base by this stage, and uh, they were pro-Soviet, so they were pro-Petrograd uh, Soviet soldiers. Uh, and they, after the Kornilov affair, both groups were seen as defenders of the revolution, so they both also gained a lot of stature. Um, and the Kronstadt sailors were uh, supported the Bolsheviks in the October Revolution too. The Kornilov affair, the other big point here, the Kornilov affair increased Bolshevik support. Uh, the Bolsheviks presented themselves as defenders of Petrograd, which diverted attention away from their failure during the July days. So they were armed, Kerensky armed them, and he had pretty much no other choice. He armed the Bolsheviks, Bolshevik supporters, and other Petrograd Soviets of um, uh, members and so forth. Um, and uh, the Bolsheviks, through their role in the Kornilov affair, gained uh, a lot of prestige. And as a result, their membership numbers went up. So you want to know what these membership numbers here are. I need to remember them. So I'll just go through them very quickly here. Uh, membership of the Bolshevik Party in February 1917 was 24,000. In April 1917, it was 100,000. And then by October 1917, uh, membership had increased to 340,000 Bolshevik members. Okay. Another key point, uh, it demonstrated the provisional government's lack of authority over the military and how vulnerable the provisional government was to military threat. So they needed the support, they needed the support of the Petrograd Soviet and other re and revolutionary parties such as the Bolsheviks in order to defend Petrograd. They didn't have it, they didn't have, Kerensky didn't know, have enough military power himself to defend Petrograd, so he depended upon the Soviet and the Bolsheviks and others, um, and it showed his uh, lack of authority, military authority as well as political authority too. Because we know if you don't control the, if you don't control, if the government doesn't control the military, then um, it has no real authority at all. It showed that the people were prepared to defend Petrograd, but not necessarily the provisional government. Okay, so that sort of connects into the July days. So the, with that failed insurrection, um, we know Petrograd is uh, uh, the political centre of Russia at this time, uh, and whoever pretty much controlled Petrograd controls uh, the Russian government is in authority. 
um, and the people were prepared to defend Petrograd, but not necessarily the provisional government. And that, I suppose, that links to um, what happens in October 1917, when the provisional government is overthrown with very little, very little effort, very few deaths. Um, so, yes. Next. It uh, contributed to the Bolsheviks gaining, gaining their first majority in the Petrograd Soviet and the Moscow Soviet. So this is a key point here, all right? So we've spoken about how the, uh, the Bolsheviks being a highly disciplined and organised revolutionary party, there they were the revolutionary party who continued to turn up to all the meetings of the Soviets, even after those meetings had become a bit, you know, ho-hum, a bit boring, by August, September 1917, where many other revolutionaries, Mensheviks, uh, social revolutionaries and so forth, uh, had stopped attending. The Bolsheviks kept attending in numbers and as a consequence, they had a disproportionate influence over the Soviet. This combined with the increased support they got as a consequence of the Kornilov affair amongst the people gave them finally their first majority. So their first majority in the Petrograd Soviet means they had uh, a majority of the votes in the Petrograd Soviet. And with that, they could start voting in various things to uh, support their um, final aim of overthrowing the provisional government. Another significant point, uh, Trotsky and two other Bolshevik leaders, Vladimir Antonov Avensko and P.E. Dibienko, who played a prominent role in the October Revolution, were released from prison on the 4th of September as a consequence of the Kornilov affair. So they were released and then they start doing, uh, start attending the meetings in the Petrograd Soviet and um, putting their votes behind the Bolsheviks too. And here's the big point here. So this is uh, one of the most significant points of the Kornilov affair in relation to uh, the Bolsheviks' eventual success in October 1917. And it's this creation here of the Military Revolutionary Committee, the MRC by the Petrograd Soviet on the 9th of October 1917. Um, and it was set up uh, under the... Uh, uh, instigated by the Bolsheviks. They had the majority of the votes in the Petrograd Soviet and they set it up uh, in order to streamline um, streamline military decisions. Uh, what happened was uh, military decisions were now, uh, military decisions made by the Petrograd Soviet were now deferred to, I suppose, this military revolutionary committee. They made, it's a subcommittee, they made the decisions on behalf of the Petrograd Soviet about what to do with the military. And I remind you that uh, uh, this links back to, uh, I remind you about uh, Soviet order number one, which uh, ordered all military troops, soldiers and so forth, Kronstadt sailors, etc., all of them to uh, follow uh, the provisional government's orders only so long as they didn't contradict those orders of the Petrograd Soviet. So if the Petrograd Soviet said, uh, for the military to do something, then the military would do it. Even if the provisional government said, don't do that, the military soldiers and so forth would follow the Petrograd Soviet's orders. And now the Bolsheviks create this military revolutionary committee and they, uh, they fill it with, it's got five members. So here, Firstly, it's set up to defend Petrograd against a possible German or counter-revolutionary attack. So this is the, this is the um, overt reason why it's set up to defend Petrograd against a possible German or counter-revolutionary attack, i.e. another Kornilov type assault. So um, to try to protect uh, Petrograd against a future commander-in-chief of the military, Russian commander-in-chief of the military, who might decide once again to march on Petrograd. So that's the overt reason. Um, but, 
I suppose uh, what it did, uh, you need to look at the membership of the uh, Military Revolutionary Committee to get a real insight into what it uh, gave the Bolsheviks. So it had five members. Three of them were Bolsheviks, Trotsky, Antonov, Ovsienko, and Dubenko. Those three who were released from prison on the 4th of September. And then there were two left SRs, okay, as well, to sort of give us, I suppose, this sense, you know, around sort of a democratic-like flavour to the military military revolutionary committee but there was no doubt that the Bolsheviks controlled the military revolutionary committee the military revolutionary committee controlled the military um, or oversaw military actions within the Petrograd Soviet and the Petrograd Soviet controlled the military so the Bolsheviks pretty much had power now control over the military um, and this date here, the 9th of October 1917, our next video, we're going to look at the events leading up to the Bolshevik Revolution and in October 1917. And one of the key, one of the key actions that Lenin takes a day after this DMRC is set up, so on the DMRC is set up on the 9th of October 1917, a day after on the 10th of October 1917, Lenin convinces the Bolshevik Central Committee to agree to uh, an insurrection against the provisional government. He doesn't get them, he doesn't, he isn't, he is unable to convince them to set a date, but he does uh, convince them to at least prepare for an insurrection against uh, the provisional government. And when it does, uh, when the uh, uprising, the insurrection does occur against the provisional government, led by the Bolsheviks and the Petrograd Soviet. It is the MRC that's at the forefront of organising this and Trotsky in particular through the MRC, controlling the movements of Bolshevik troops, Red Guards, Kronstadt sailors and so forth to overthrow uh, the provisional government in Petrograd. Anyway, I hope this has helped and I will see you in the next video on the October Revolution of Serbia. Thank you very much for listening and watching. Bye.